Hi, in this video I'm going to explain how an electric fence can be connected onto a gate. I'm going to go into a lot of detail about the principles of operation. Right, I'm first going to explain how to connect the wires to your fence that is on your gate. Now, as you can see, I'm using this Nemtech contactor and what it does is it allows the electric fence to remain a closed circuit while the gate opens. Right, so in order to get my wires from my electric fence to the electric fence wires on the sliding gate, I'm using this contactor. Now, these are the wires coming from my electric fence. So this is live and that's also live. So what this does is it allows you to extend your fence onto the gate. All this is doing is it's extending the circuit, allowing the current to still flow in series. So I'll show you what I mean by that. When the gate opens, when the gate opens, you can see that these two contactors are now shorted out. So if I take my meter and I just show you what I mean by shorted out, this is on continuity. The noise tells me it's a short circuit. And when I touch there and there, you, you can hear the noise and see zero ohms. So this is a short circuit. So effectively what this means is if I had to press here, I'm actually opening my electric fence. So the alarm, the electric fence alarm should activate if I do this. Now, if you want to know the resistance of the wires that are on your gate, the newly added wires to extend your fence to your gate, you do as follows. So if I measure the resistance of the wires that are on top of the gate, you can see the ohms is 6.3 ohms. So as you can see, there's no earth here. If you wanted to have an earth, you would need to have another one of these here and have a third wire going on your gate. That is very uncommon. Right, if you have a look at the wiring on the electric fence, you'll see the very first wire is just going in that direction then when it gets to the end it jumped to this wire it will return on this wire then this wire is jumped to the next one and it goes along to the other side of the gate then that one will return on this wire then on this side it's jumped and you follow that same principle right up until you get to the 12th wire so see there right at the top of the gate you'll see there's a wire. Now that wire is coming all the way down to the return to that contactor. Right, so that's the 12th line and you can see that there is a wire that is running from that 12th line all the way down the pole. And it makes its way here. So what I'm saying is that that wire is the very first line of your fence, line one, and that one is line 12. Now, if I look at the other side of the gate, all right, so here is the very first wire that's coming from that contactor running along the gate, and there you can see it's jumped to line two. Then line two runs along the gate, jump it on the other side, and then returns on line three. So there you can see it returns on line three, and then it's jumped to line four, running along the gate, and returns on line five. Then five is jumped to line six. Six running along the gate and returns on line seven. And you follow that all the way until you get to the final lines. So there you can see on the top, that's line 11, jumped to 12, running along the gate, 12 going back to the contactor. Even though it's on a gate, I still like to use tensioners. Now these two wires are coming from your fence. So all you need to do is open one of the lines on your fence, any live wire, and just open it, run it here, and the return goes to the other side of that line you opened. Right, I just want to demonstrate the electric fence aspect here. So when I open the gate, and the electric fence is still on. So if I press this in, the electric fence should actually activate the alarm. And you might even be able to hear that. And my electric fence alarm will probably activate now. And there you can see my electric fence light is activated, telling me an alarm has occurred. Right, so before I explain to you how to connect the gate section to your 
electric fence. I'm just going to explain to you the principle of the electric fence. So here you've got the live and then you've got the return. So what happens is a pulse is sent out of the energizer and it's a series circuit. This is closed. If the fence is open at any point in time, the energizer then initiates an alarm. It thinks that somebody has cut the wires and initiates alarm. So your electric fence is always a closed circuit. If it's too short, the electric fence, the energizer also knows there's a fault. That means somebody shorted out the terminals over here and it should also alarm. So in this case, it's got a resistance, which you can actually measure by the way. And the point of adding the gate is simply just to open this and include this part of the gate, which is also a series circuit. So all you're doing is as follows. You're opening one of the lines and you're joining it to the gate. There it comes through the electric fence on the gate and back through to the return wire, maintaining a series circuit. So if you look at this, this is still in series. It cannot be in parallel. If you connect it in parallel, all that's going to happen is, yes, it will be energized. And what I mean by that is if you touch it, you'll get a shock. But if somebody had to cut any of those wires, the alarm will not go off. So just to refresh, it's a series circuit. There's the energizer and there is the entire wire all the way back to the supply, a series circuit. By adding the gate, all you're doing is you're lengthening this, but still a series circuit. So keep that in mind. Some people think they can just add this in parallel. Yes, there'll still be a high voltage here, but if I had to cut that, if someone had to climb on your gate and cut the wires, your energizer will not alarm. It will only alarm if the series circuit is broken. In that sense, if you have a look at this, you can see here comes the current flowing here, series through the wires on the gate. They're returning there. Any point on this travel, if somebody cuts the wires, the electric fence energizer will alarm. So that is the principle of how you connect the gate section. You don't have to do it like this. I'm just giving you one option. If you're wondering what this is, this is your earth. Remember that the earth wires are always running nearby your live wires so that if somebody moves the live wire and it touches the earth, you'll also get an alarm activation. So the next question is how do you wire this? Yes, in principle this is easy, but now I'm going to show you the wiring layout. So here's the fence and if you could imagine these are the wires running all along the wall on the upright poles. So I haven't numbered them because people like to put the live and the earth in different sequences. So I'm just going to show you the principle. The principle is that live wire goes round your whole property, as you can see, it goes round your property. Now you might decide, you know what, you want to put your earth wire as number one. So that would be number one, there's your earth. Then let's say that is number two. Then you might say, okay, number three, you want your earth again. So then you're doing that. Now number four, this is the live. Now number five, there's your earth again. Now you say, no, number six, you want it to be your live. It's up to you how you set this up, and I'm definitely not prescribing it. What I'm saying is if you can have a look, you can see this, the live wire is running in the loops all the way around the property, all the way to return home. So in order to connect the gate section to your fence, all you need to do is open any one of these live wires. Wherever you are, whichever is closest to the gate, all you're doing is you're literally opening it, cancel that, and there goes your gate section. So let me show you again. So here happens to be a 12 wire. And this is on your gate. You've already installed your poles and I've numbered them 1 to 12. These are your bobbins and there you can see on the other side of your gate you've got your 1 to 12. So how do you connect these? Now remember I said that the live on mine comes in there on number 1. So I'm using number 1 of my wires that are on the gate to be my first line. So there comes the live and what happens is I'm going to jump it to line two. So you can see that on this side, one runs all along the gate and it's jumped to number two. Two comes this side, two is linked to line three. Three comes this side, three is linked to four. Four comes this side, four is linked to five. Five comes this side, five is linked to six. 
6 to 7, 7 to 8, and maybe you only got an 8 wire fence. Well, then 8 will go back to the contactor. That will go back to the live of your electric fence. But if you've got more wires, then 8 will be linked to 9, 9 will be linked to 10, 10 to 11, 11 to 12, and 12 is coming all the way back here to my contactor. So if you look at this, while it might look like they're in parallel, they're not. This is a series circuit. So if somebody had to come and cut anywhere, any one of these wires, your electric fence alarm will activate. However, if somebody pushes line 4 onto line 5 like that, the alarm will not activate. Because all you're doing is you're touching the live on the live and the potential difference is too similar, so you will not have an alarm. If you want to add earth wires in between here, you can, but I'm not going to explain that now. And just keep in mind, you shouldn't be earthing your gate. So if you do want to add earth wires in between here, maybe you want to have live one, three, and two is an earth. Make sure that earth is not touching your gate because if the live and the earth touch each other a person who touches the gate a gate is normally steel should not get a shock right i'm just showing you if all of the wires are live so now you come out here what do you do next well there you go the, those are the two wires and all you needed to do was open any one of the lines on your electric fence as long as you open it go through to the gate and the other side go back on that line. So you open circuit any one of the lines and then you will use that contactor. Right now a property, let's just say it's a square. There's a piece of land and you're going to put your energizer to it and ideally you'll have your sending wire going around the property and it'll do its loops all the way around and then it will come back to the receiving end. So you can see there's no break in that wire. The problem is, is that most properties need a driveway. And therefore, it's very difficult to get that wire across. Now, this is the point of adding the gate. So when you add the gate, you effectively need this gap in the fence. Or if you want to, you could put your fence wires underneath the driveway and carry on on that side. Even if you do this, you're still going to have to terminate and do some links on these two upright poles. So now I'm just going to show you how to end the fence, which might make it easier for you when you are doing your gate installation. Right, so imagine this is the far side of your fence, and this is the other side of your fence, but actually these two are at the same place. So you can imagine that this wire is wrapping right round, and F and F are at the same place. So if I had to draw it on a square, you would see that F would be there. So that means your energizer, if your energizer is sitting here, F is there and F is there. So you can see there F and F is the same place. Now, because we need a driveway into the property, we have to find a way to link these sides and leave a gap so that people can drive in and out. Now, this is just one method. I'm just providing this for explanation purposes. All right, so this is the end of the fence and this is now gonna be the end of the fence. So this is the one end and this is the other end because we have to gap the fence because you would have your driveway here. So there would be your cars driving through. Now, remember I showed you, you can have the fence on your gate and therefore you would have your fence still over this, but remember it's moving, so you'd still have to have an end of your fence. So end and end. So how do you get this right? So the energizer needs to have a sending wire. Now let's say, for example, you're going to use the first line as earth. And I'm not prescribing this. So that means you're going to go over that line and into that line. So your one live wire of your energizer is sitting on line two. Now what you'll need to do is you'll then need to connect the other side of your energizer, the return wire, also to number two. But what you're seeing is there's a short circuit here. So what I need to do is actually open that. So that is now an open circuit. So what you can see now is that your fence starts on line two and it ends on line two. Now, once again, you don't have to do it. This has many ways to do it. I'm just really showing you the principle. And many people prefer to start their live wire on line one rather than having line one and earth. So in my case, I'm just going to do a more traditional approach and put earth on line one. So let's jump 
or link line one and line three together. So that means line one, line three, and let's do every second wire to be an earth. So as you can see now, line one, three, five, seven, nine, and 11 are all earth wires. So you cannot connect any live to any of those wires. So that means that, let's start here. This is going to be your sending wire. So let's go, it's going to go there. It's going to go two. So that means two, and I'm going to use red for live, is now going to four. Four goes round your entire fence, comes this side, and goes to six. Six goes round your entire fence, comes to this side, goes to eight. Eight goes round, goes to ten. 10 goes round, goes to 12. 12 is the return wire going all the way back, not touching anything, to 2. And that maintains a series circuit. So why this is important is you've effectively made an end point to your fence. So there's one end and there's one end. And don't forget, these are all joined together. The 1, the 3, the 5, the 7, the 9, the 11. That's all going to earth, and you'll obviously earth that in many places. So now you can see that we've got a series circuit. Because it's a series circuit, you could have inserted your energizer in many different places. You didn't have to use number two, you could have used number four, you could have used number six. The point is, is that it still maintains a series circuit. So what does that mean on this side here? So here's your driveway. So that means that this is your final pole. So if I draw it in, there are your bobbins, there are your linkages, you'll also have the links for your earth. On this side, I'll draw it for you, there are your bobbins. So that is the final pole on that side and that is the final pole on that side maintaining a series circuit even though you've got a gap here. Remember I said because your property would have to have an opening. You've now done that. That's what you've effectively done. And when your gate is connected, all you're doing is you're opening one of these lines and you're going to connect it to your gate. Right, if I return you back to the gate, you'll see you had two wires coming in. That is alive. That is also alive. So it means that maybe you just open that and that. You open circuited it. And you use that Nemtech contactor and it goes like that. Maintaining that series circuit. So there's your gate and then when your gate moves, that becomes closed. Gate moves and then your gate closes again and there you see it returns to its position and allows this to be energized covering that part of your gate. On this side over here is now sitting on the other side of your gate. So it would be here, not touching those. This will be your final pole and you would have your, your links like that. Ideally, if they could be overlapped, not touching, but, but overlapped. So somebody cannot squeeze in between there. And right over here, I have my energizer, it's off. These are the two wires, the live and the return. And I'm just going to show you the resistance. If I measure the resistance, right, so there you can see the total resistance of my fence, it's 52 ohms. Now when I open the gate, that should go down because the gate is a series connected resistor. So all I'm doing is I'm now opening the gate. Right, so the gate is open, I'm measuring 43 ohms. Now just a note, if you are attempting to do this test, it might not be as straightforward as I've shown. This is brand new, but what you find is there's a spring behind those two discs. They don't always make good conductivity when you're measuring this with the resistance. So all I do is I just tap it so that the springs seat nicely onto the disc. Keeping in mind that when the energizer is on, this makes no difference. Right, I hope that was helpful and thanks for watching and cheers.